What is up guys, welcome back to another of today's video. Today we'll be taking a look at generally how powerful the Polaris Lance, what our Radiance and Starfire protocol is, and why, if you are a new or veteran player, should give this loadout a try if you ever want to head into endgame content such as Grandmasters, but don't want to invest very hard into particular gear. There are currently many endgame builds designed to find the use of survival, damage or incorporating both. Out of these, there are a certain number of builds that rise above the rest and have become a staple to what users should use if they want the best experience. This, in many ways, cements the idea that as long as you have the same or similar gear as those shown, then you should be able to do fine as long as you have a strat in mind. When it comes down to trying something new though, it can be difficult depending on ease of use, firepower and mods used. But sometimes, through trial and error, you may find a build that actually works surprisingly well and sometimes these builds are the most similar around. Take today's build, this build utilises the Polaris Lance for continuous damage and ammo, while the Radiance for support and Starfire Protocol for grenade regeneration. This build is very simple in design and function, but these three synergy are all that you need to make a simple but powerful build that will keep you going from start to finish. It doesn't require key mods to make you uber powerful in the process, no need of certain exotics such as Anarchy to carry you. And on top of that, it covers both damage and support all in one without hassle. This will be a build that I hope players will give a try for all endgame content in mind if they like to experiment and flex different ideas out for most effective builds in certain areas. At the same time, I also hope this sort of build will help the new players transition into endgame with a breeze until they find something else better. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video, then I would really appreciate a like and a sub as it really does go a long way for me. For the subclass, we shall be using the Attunement of Grace for the many necessary buffs that will be ongoing while using Starfire Protocol at its max. The plan for the build here is to allow the user to have a constant supply of ammo, damage and grenades available as long as we hit certain requirements and if done correctly, we can build up damage very quickly without the weight. Firstly, our wells will play a big part in how the build will react to different environments while at the same time affect how Starfire will operate. Secondly, how we keep the flow of the build going so that no matter where we are, we can always rely on one source to fix the other key areas of abilities being used. Now, I had an idea as to how we can achieve this by using Empowering Rift, Guiding Flames and Benevolent Dawn to empower our weapons, which will at the same time trigger Starfire Protocol, Exotic Trait and grant us grenade energy as long as our weapons are empowered and we hit a target with them. Through this method, if we get a grenade kill, we can also gain Rift Energy from doing so via Starfire's Exotic Trait and can gain even more via the Benevolent Dawn perk if our allies use our Rifts. But since we are using Polaris Lance which has the ability to return ammo to the magazine and pretty much allow us to infinitely fire on a target as long as it's a crit, we can combine everything here so that the moment we become empowered, we can hit a target's crit through a few shots, throw our grenades and repeat as many times as we like. This can allow users to have infinite ammo and grenades at hand through just using a rift to trigger this. This is generally how the build plays and although you're not getting a large amount of damage in the full burst, it offers a continuous source of damage where you can use your more heavy hitting attacks at a later date. This here is more than enough to carry you far and wide without little effort involved. Now for the weapons, I've already explained that to make the build as simple and easy to use, that would be wise to use Polaris Lance as your main tool for its benefits. This then leaves you with space for secondary and heavy, which anything goes, but we can be smart with this. My primary for example is the Ignition Co with slight shot and fresh and I plan to use the weapon for quickly dispersing groups via its blast radius and damage, or use it as a quick way to damage your boss through the slide shot perk. I've been trying to get a roll with slide shot for ages because of how strong the perk is on the weapon and I have now finally managed to get it. Although blinding grenades are more superior in the long run, this will be down to the user if they feel it will be more relevant for the build or not. For my case, I want to have a grenade launcher that can keep up with the consistency of damage the same way that my grenades and exotic can through simple actions. With slide shot, I can fire, slide and reload weapon in an instant which is useful if you're ever up against a champion who you really need to down quickly before they recover. Alongside this, I have the Breach and Clear mod for the 30% debuff which will play a big part in the rest of the build and we will be using Explosive Well Maker as well to produce elemental wells for a quick boost on the ability energy when needed. For a secondary, I'm using the Polaris Lance Exotic for the perfect 5th perk which will hold the build together from start to finish. 
the exotic trait has the ability to return ammo to the user via crit shots. And upon landing four precision shots, a delayed solar explosion will trigger, and then restart again. From playing with the weapon, it has proven to be extremely useful for taking out tough enemies from long distances without losing too much ammo in the process, and the delayed explosion provides an extra kick in terms of damage. Because of this innate ability of return ammo, we can use this feature to keep Starfire protocol always active and have our rifts fairly recharge even when we don't have teammates around. Attaching the anti-barrier mod to the weapon has proven to be very useful as well, as the Hydra shields for example can be easily bypassed and dealt with within seconds. The only downside is that the delayed explosion won't go through said shields, but rather stay on the outside. This isn't a problem as we can either wait or use on a roaming enemy instead. For heavy, I have the Swarm Machine Gun with Tactical Mag, Outlaw and Warper Weapon, and although any weapons such as Coduello with 7 Sever Sword or Berenger's Memory, for example, with Ideal Perks are a good pick, the Swarm for me comes out on top for getting the job done, and is perfect for any content that involves Arc Shields. As heavy machine guns are great for the damage in a few shots, Warper makes the weapon even better with the 15% buff against mini bosses and bosses, which we can combine with Weather Radiance for that extra 25% buff and Breach and Clear for that 30% debuff. This will overall allow you to dump damage into a boss on a consistent but effective manner whenever you are ready. For the stats section, we have a lot of flexibility here since the majority of items and gear being used will keep our main abilities going, but it's still going to be wise to have key areas such as Discipline, Strength, Intellect, etc. relatively at a moderate level for a passive regeneration. Now, as we mentioned earlier, to make the build as effective as possible, we will be relying on the empowering abilities to keep us going. For this, I've kept my recovery level at 70, as this will rapidly recover my rift regeneration when nothing else is active. However, if we have grenades available and I get a kill with them, we can gain rift energy doing so, so in many ways we can stay in our rifts and activate Starfire's as like a trait and pretty much keep it at 100% at all times, but only if we net a kill. With the rifts comes the grenades, which we have set at 70. Because of the synchronization going on within the build, this area can be reduced down to 50 or lower if you feel you would like to make use of the mod slots for other stronger mods instead. I have only left it this high as a backup in case I don't always get kills with my weapons or grenades, or if I mess up in a really difficult situation which ends with all my abilities being spent. This is rare as the build is very much covered on all angles with mods such as Explosive Wildmaker providing us energy via elemental wells and the Innovation mod which will reduce grenade cooldown from orbs of power pickup. We do also have our subclass of Well of Radiance and Benevolent Dawn available that will appropriately keep all of our abilities fresh. After Rift and Grenades comes Intellect and this area will be very active through simple offerings of the build. I have pushed this stat to 50 as we have double ashes to add it so that will be granting us a hefty amount of super energy per grenade kills, and since grenades will be flowing like water, getting your super will become instant. We could on the other hand add in the dynamo mod which utilizes rifts for faster super cooldown but will greatly depend on where you plan to use it and whether you have something to protect you in close quarters since our weapons are lacking that feature. I do have the protected light mod on me so I can survive for longer on critical health but this is just standard for all endgame content and sometimes it doesn't always work as planned. Now onto the mods and these are what I chose to aim for for the overall role of the build. For head we have resilience, access to assets times 2 and protective light mod. Arm we have mind discipline, unstoppable grenade launcher and anti-barrier scout rifle mod. Chest we have resilience, cocoa dampener times 2 and charge with light mod. Leg we have discipline, innovation, grenade launcher scavenger and explosive well maker mod. Bond, we then have minor discipline and breaching clear mod. As an in-game build, we now have a build that's pretty capable of supporting you and your team through the most simplest of actions, all leading up to you being the main lead and survival of the group. From a group of minor enemies to an in-game nightfall boss, this build is capable of covering all areas surprisingly well, and doesn't require the use of your teammates to aid you in all your endeavors, although it would be helpful nonetheless. The usage of the loadout through standard Nightfall content has shown that it has a big advantage against those who have easy to hit crits and those who are easily taken down by a stick grenade in one shot. As mentioned before, Polaris Lands has the ability to refund ammo upon critical hits made and this key strength of the weapon can allow big damage to occur over time without the need or use of your heavy. If we take Critis from Empire Hunter as an example, 
She has a fairly large crit spot and moves slowly, which we can use to our advantage. Landing back to back crit spots on her are easy, and with this, we can proc the delayed explosion for even more damage onto her and those who surround her. Damage here is fairly simple but adds up very quickly. Now, when we decide to get ourselves empowered, that's where the fun begins. Now, every time we land a critical hit onto the boss or normal hit, we will be regenerating grenade energy in the mean run. From this, we can do a bit of damage, grenade, and repeat until we run out of empowerment. But from this, we can easily take out a quarter to a half of the boss's health to mini boss's health through that method. If everything goes as planned though, we are able to get our wrist back after the first usage, which we can easily repeat this process as many times as we like until we get our super ready to pop it. What this build shows is that its continuous damage will come from one key area, which is your rift, and then it will build up your effect by interacting with your exotics. Damage won't be instantly large compared to what most builds offer, but its long standing effects is what matters the most as that will allow you to pick off all types of enemies' health at a slow and respectable pace, something that fits well if you plan to use it in Grand Masters. And since the build offers a pretty strong outcome for the main basics, it then leaves you space to mix match mod to your pleasing while not taking away too much from the core of the build. However, there are some downsides to the build which will vary from time to time and some can be outright annoying and not feasible at times. A prime example of annoyance is if the enemy is very mobile and has a small crit spot. Take this week's Nightfall boss. She is not only lethal at close range, but she also moves very fast and has a huge amount of health and hits very hard. On top of that, if you do manage to stop and land a few shots onto her, she may turn around and target you, which can lead to your rift going to waste. This means that for me to succeed against her, I would need to use my super to absorb as much damage as possible just to get a few good shots in, or I'll just need to find as much cover as possible and make use of it there. Now remember, as long as I am empowered, any of my weapons will work and trigger Starfire's grenade regeneration, not just my one weapon, such as Polaris. This downside and the lack of close range stopping power can at times place you in a very difficult situation to fight back, and the only way you'll be able to make this all work out is to keep your distance and make full use of cover. On the other hand, 90% of the bosses to mini bosses in game have a fairly large crit spot that you can hit, so you won't be losing too much out when against certain types of enemies. I personally believe this build can be used very well for all end game content, as you have something great going for you from start to finish. Although a lot of people want something a bit more harder hitting, such as Anarchy or Xenophage, if you know what you're doing and you have something that is equal in terms of damage, then I believe this should be the next build you'd simply try out just for its ease of use alone and continuous damage. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all next one.